Hey, ladies and gents, Vaccinato here. Uh, I want to show you um, something that I've discussed with a few people on online and want to kind of show it in a video. Um, it's kind of a way of thinking. Uh, there's a philosophy behind it and then there's the practical part. And the idea is to kind of um, produce Psytrance music that is um, a little bit different than what is going on today. It's by no means inventing the wheel or discovering um, the Americas or something. But um, it's a pretty cool kind of way of thinking and way of doing things, and we just want to share it with you, and you can take it into um, whatever you do, your own productions, and do whatever you want to develop it or not. So the basic idea um, is to get really kind of um, hypnotic um, and deep vibe going with trance music, uh, to get you really into, into that trance kind of vibe. And there are some, some keys that we are using um, recently in order to achieve this. The first thing that we do is if you look at this track, um, you'll notice that some of these channels are actually running for a really, really, really long time. Like if you take this section over here, it is almost, um, let me bring in the transport. So it starts at 328 and ends at something like seven minutes. So it's like running for pretty much three and a half minutes. And if you look at the section, you will notice that Many of the channels are just going across the whole section. And basically what you're trying to achieve is, and also if you look at the ones before and after, um, to, a, to a lesser degree, they are similar uh, as well. So what you're trying to achieve is to actually layer all these channels and use that layering within a long loop, as opposed to, let's say, working with a 16 um, bar or something like this with a small loop and then cloning your channels um, across. You start with long MIDI. If you look down here, some of our MIDI, we start like across a, the whole track almost, across really long loops. But if you look at it again, um, sorry, I left the MIDI. Let's look at it just one second. You see that a lot of it is automations that have been going into our hardware. Some of these actually have multiple ones on them on each one of these. So the key is to automate everything and to get really long things going um, by, by creating interaction between the automations of the different lines. And, that, and use that way to create your harmonic content. So what we basically mean is if you take one of these, And you add in some more. Obviously, some. Oops, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now, obviously, some of these channels will be more um, distinct in the mix, but the point is that overall, there's no one one soloing major lead kind of sound. Um, they are all drowning in, in each other. Some of them are more like hooks, but some of them are really just complete backing sounds. And then when you have, have them all added up together, you get that um, harmonic wall sort of vibe. Uh, they are basically functioning in the end like one piece of sound. And another way to get um, to achieve more, to, to have this kind of um, emphasize this thing going on is to use a lo really long delay lines. If you look at each one of these channels, um, some of them are already in the recording, but uh, yeah, I guess there's not much to see on our mixer because it's already been recorded with the delays, but we'll show other tracks in a minute where it's not yet recorded with the delay. So, and um, so a part of the key obviously is to get these this really long loop going as opposed to a to working in with small loops um, to use a, a lot of delay with a lot of feedback in order to get um, all these sounds harmonizing and drowning within each other and coming in and out of prominence in the mix. Um, of course, the automations um, and once you get 
you, let's say you recorded, um, I don't know exactly the order where we recorded these, but let's say you're taking um, two of these, for example, and you already have two going, and then they're opening up, they're doing things with the automations. And then it gets easier and more flowing to add the other ones because you already know some of the stuff that is going on. So if this one is, you know, you can decide. Um, you can decide which one of them is coming out of prominence and drowning with the other ones as you get more and more of them going. Another key thing here is to have your automations not clinical. And what I mean is do not draw your automations. Um, because you'll get really straight and scientific lines. What you want here is a really kind of bubbly and organic type of sound where all the sounds, um, again, the emphasis is to flow in and out of each other. So you basically automate, let's say you have um, some sound on a high resonance and you're automating the cutoff. And if you do it in straight lines, then it would just come in and out. And you know you could do it that way as well and it would be nice. But if you actually use a knob to do it, then you'll have those little tiny so-called almost mistakes um, where you'd be like going a little tiny bit too high for a second on the cutoff and have like little tiny peaks going on. And that'll really give you that organic feel and that sort of feel with all the delays that things are jumping in and out kind of of, of the harmonic, um, of prominence of like dominance within the harmonic wall. Uh, so so yeah, draw, um, don't draw your automations, um, make them make them lively especially with this method and it sure adds a lot and if you look at the role of the drums here um, basically when in this track it is less apparent because there is some room in the spectrum but if you add all these layers and they're all automating and you have like a really emphasis strong emphasis on the harmonic content and like a sort of hypnotic repetition then you're not going to have room for like a huge drums and huge bass and a lot of percussion sounds so ob obviously you can, if you want, you can add your um, whatever you would like, but this is kind of our philosophy to do with it. So we have just basically really basic drums, um, drum sounds, which are like a kick, snare, open and closed hats, and a bass line, so. And the bass line we've pretty much used here is pretty much like a dotted sort of bass line. It's not a big bass line. Um, we, w we really want the, s the synths to have the, um, like the, major, uh, um, the major place, the biggest place in the mix and have the bass line and the drums sort of just provide a running groove for it. But you do notice that there are a lot of changes in sections in the groove itself. And that really is what, I mean, you have everything here is kind of really flowing and you do want some drive in the track. I mean, if you didn't want drive at all, then you would just have make beatless ambient, just use the drones by themselves. So the key here, part of one of the keys is to have the beat evolve from sec section to section. So you would get Another thing that we've used in this track to help kind of keep the groove is um, just, just to use really basic stabs and to have them, again, look, they're running the whole time, maybe a little bit of variation on the sound with some automations. And we have them. And of course we use, of course, of course we do use some percussion sounds in some parts. So this is just to state the obvious. You can do whatever you want. So you end up with something that is really flowing and organic.
So if we get just a little bit, um, just into one line, let's just take a look at, for example, this one. So all you have is this, and you just, it's it's kind of obvious. Of course, every Psytrance producer does it, but just on a long, on a long scale, right? On a big loop, do it on a big loop. So let's kind of show um, similar things that we've, um, how we've used this method in other tracks as well. So let's get rid of this one. And let's open up, um, I kind of looked and there was something I wanted to show, yeah, in this one. So this is a track from Ocean Star Empire. It's a remix to um, Bacchanalian bass, um, our friend Kyle. And let's have a look what we have here. So, so in this track, as you can see, uh, part of the track is kind of built in a traditional way. You can actually really see it um, on this arrange. So you have all these channels that are like in a traditional kind of trance way, coming in and out and looped and whatever. Of course, they are also edited and have automations, but the point is that the core sound is coming in and out, different channels, blah, 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 blah. Now, this is all the stuff that we got from Kyle, and of course, we rearranged it and put some effects on it to make the remix. But um, here you can see some sounds, two sounds uh, especially that we added, and we've used that philosophy of um, going for a really long and sustained sound throughout the track that is evolving. And I think this is the best example of this type of work with this sound over right here. And if you have a look, then... So this sound starts out as a sort of... Um, percussive sound with really closed envelopes um, the hits are just if you go real you can see actually see that it's basically it's hits as it is right here so the, the drawn MIDI is sort of like MIDI stabs but then using um, your envelopes your decay and your release and um, if you have FM and the cutoff and whatever parameters on the synth you can evolve the sound throughout the whole track where it takes on different um, different roles. So this here it took a role of a, a sort of a percuss percussive sound. And it opens up here to really like it starts like opening up to a stab sound and then becomes like really a really um sort of almost a big lead and then it can become almost like a pa pad when you open up for the release. Oops. So in this track, we really went for the harmonic wall sort of vibe. And we took also, as I've said before, part of um, working with this kind of stuff uh, is actually to use a lot of delay. So if we took, let's say this was the original. This was a really cool, um, the original stem, a really cool arpeggio. But what we did on it was we totally drowned it in um, delay and reverb. And we purposely did this drowning to end up with like a really atmospheric channel. So we get. And let's hear, let's, I'll press play and I'll let, um, I'll add channels along. So let's say you have different harmonic layers, let's call them. So even though, as you build these channels, each synth is, is, you don't have to do this, right? They're really nice by themselves. They have a defined role. But we purposely, if, you, if you'd if you like, um, in, um, of course, in parentheses, you could say destroy the sound by drowning everything together. 
but this is just a sort of philosophy. It's the hypnotic sort of thing. So let's look at it from the break, and I'll let you hear, and I'll also um, I'll also add in the drums uh, after the break, so you can listen really uh, to sort of the the end res the end result. So. another track and let's not save this obviously and um, 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 um let's look at this one so this is a remix to digicult and uh, they posted uh, this remix project online and we just I don't know we felt like doing it and again you can see this channel and it is going almost through the whole track right after the intro. It is starting and is basically running. Oops, this is going to second. It's going to take a second. So this channel is basically running through the whole track over here. And we also did um, what we did on the previous track: uh, take the take the various stems that we got, and just add drown them in each other and create that sort of harmonic wall vibe and it starts out modestly in a modest harmonic wall and it gets into by the time the track is ending it's a really really um messy wall so so this is one of the sounds that we've added and by itself it might sound like a really strange sound to have throughout the whole track but the way it is interacting with the other sounds is really the important thing over here so and you can also see that we took um, a few of his stems and ran them across the whole track like this. oops I'm sorry like this. so we have these stabs uh, chord stabs running behind the whole track and in the beginning they are very prominent but as you had more harmonic content they begin to lose their dominance in the mix they are still there but they are more and more as you add things are just becoming a part of the layering so let's for example play that and I will add just harmonic layers I won't add the beat so Cybird things that sounded so weird, so weird by themselves, right? But when you got everything going with them,
and it becomes really insane after the last break. So if you've noticed on that last bit right here that I played, none of the sounds are dominating, but all together they are producing like one big um, harmonic wah. Let's look lastly at one last track, uh, 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 um, and it is this one. And here also, uh, just, just quickly let's look at it, we also in a way use this on some of the sounds. You have this sound that is going on throughout the whole track and it's basically just a kind of back backing sort of psy grunge but here we have something a little bit different going again this sound is going through almost the whole track but um, it is not only evolving with the automations and with the way with the way it is with the role that it is playing but also um, the its melody and the melody itself is evolving and is really strange and overlaps um, Again, we used a lot of delays for this sound, and it's a melodic sound. So once that delay gets in there, it kind of, again, let's call it screws up, but it does something nice, but it screws up the melody. So it starts as a stab. So again, with the layering of all the other things, um, in I want this and this and this. And they're all pretty much just running. You let the synths run. Um, and I've mentioned before, like on the, I'm doing all these automation type things, so I'm not sure which sound, this one. So this one is actually like a sort of, it's sort of your regular Goa sort of loop. But speaking of the automations, uh, over here, it's really changing into something totally different, taking on a totally different role in the mix. just by those little things that are opening up, um, you get totally evolving content. So you see this track doesn't use that many channels, but it sounds full because of all the things that are going on in the interaction between the channels, and that all the channels are always evolving and always changing. So I hope I didn't kind of, um, I hope I kind of got my point across with this stuff. Uh, experiment with it by yourself. The thing that we're going to do in our next tracks is we're going to take it to the next step. As you've seen um, only in the first track that I've shown, the first track that I've shown really does take it to that place that we want to take it to. Um, and the tracks, these like the one that was just now before, um, was just kind of starting to fiddle around. So this is more mature in this style. And in the next track, we're going to go for even a longer loop. We're going to try to work like with 256 bar segments or even with 512 bar uh, 
let's see what we can come up with. And I think this is also pretty cool for live stuff because if you get like a really, really long one uh, and you set it up with a lot of channels, then of course you can kind of play with the muting of the channels and the soloing of the channels. Um, also another thing to get uh, more hypnotic stuff is obviously try to get as many instrumental sounds. So if you get a little bit of violin sound in there, a little bit of piano sound or something like that and drown it out, um, these instru instruments um, provide a lot of harmonics as opposed to some of the stale sort of electronic sounds by themselves. So have fun, hope you enjoyed this video and took something from it and I'll be happy to discuss this kind of music with any of you. If any of you actually make something like this that sounds like this track, um, then please, um, I would love to hear it and perhaps I will release it, um, be interested in releasing it on my new label Pure Chords Records that is um, going to deal a lot with this kind of music. So I'll leave you with some of the sounds. See you later. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.